Hey everybody, hey, welcome return. back to another edition of the Fanguard. My name's Mark, and I'm Mark Santa Clara from 1997 to 2001. I'm John. I'm Mark in Santa Clara from 1979 through 1981. And we'd like to welcome you to another edition of the Fanguard. <laughs> Today we have an amazing episode in store for you, ladies and gentlemen. This is the number one most requested show, 2018 Santa Clara Vanguard, Babylon. Babylon. So, so cool, so excited. And we have an amazing guest list for you. Hello, Sarah, thank you so much for being here. Hi, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm really excited to do this. Um, so I'm Sarah. I marched in the Vanguard A Corps from 2015 through 2018. Um, and I played in the front ensemble. I played vibes. And in 2018, I was the percussion or front ensemble section leader. Um, and so since then, I graduated undergrad um, at UT Austin, and I am currently pursuing a graduate school program. So yeah. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank you Thank for being you. here. And next, let's go down to Miss Chesley Morgan. Thank you so much for being here, Chesley. Thank you for having all of us. Uh, I marched in the A Corps from 2015 through 2019, which is my age out. Um, and this 2020 slash 2021 season, um, I was supposed to teach at Guardians Drum and Bugle Corps. So mm. hopefully they'll invite me back again for the next season because teaching Zoom call <laughs> uh, like camps was really <laughs> fun. Um, but I also just graduated in December from, <coughs> with, from undergrad with, at Texas A&M University. And uh, I will be moving to Austin Texas pretty soon to uh, start working as hopefully an environmental um, inspector. So that's wow. what I've been doing. Awesome. Very cool. So not busy at all. Awesome. Next, let's go down to Mr. Carl. Thank you so much for being here, sir. Drum major 2018. How's it going? Uh, again, thank you for having me on board as well. Very excited to be here. March Vanguard Cadets from 2011 to 2015. Um, went to Phantom in 2016 as a conductor and then um, came back as a drum major for uh, the SCB A Corps 17 and 18, aged out in 18. Um, since then, uh, graduated from UC Davis, studied microbiology, and then immediately after that went to EMT school. And I'm currently working as a uh, EMT out in Santa Clara County, and I'm just as I'm going through that, just pursuing a career as a physician assistant pretty soon. Cool. Wow. Wow. Very cool. That's very, very cool, Carl. Physician's assistant, uh, noble calling, especially right now, and you being on the front lines. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we have an instructor from 2018. He hails from the brass section. His name is Mr. Mark Nichols. Thank you, sir, for being here. Thank you for having us. Uh, after all those other introductions, I feel like the dumbest person in the room because I'm just oh. the, the music guy. All those other smart <laughs> people there speaking <laughs> of like real life things. So, uh, but I marched in 1996 with uh, one of the producers of the show, Tony Castro. He was my section leader in the, the contra section. Um, and then I taught Blue Coats from 2007 to 2011. I came over to Vanguard in 2012. Uh, in 2016, I became the assistant brass caption head. And then starting in 2019, I was the brass caption head and still currently with the drum corps. So decided to still be working with the members any way we can in this current environment. Day job is I'm a band director in Texas, Brazoswood High School. Brazos. Uh, but Chesley is another Texas person, and Sarah is another Texas person. Carl is a Texas person at heart. We know, we know Carl where he really would be from. If you had oh, look at that. Look at that. I knew, I knew it was in there somewhere. So there's definitely oh, a that. Vanguard that. Texas. That's connection. right. That's right. <laughs> so let's talk about Babylon. What was the theme of this show? 
uh, the biggest theme was like communication and like how we, there was like a barrier, like we, right at the beginning, we were, we lost communication with each other and like the whole show is us trying to like talk to each other without being able to like use our voices. So like this specifically in like the closer, we like, like dance all together because that's like, like hip hop was supposed to be like a way to communicate with each other without like actually speaking. So just like the whole show is us trying to communicate. So the kind of pre-show slash ballad material is My Body is a Cage by Peter Gabriel. So that's what you hear twice. It's kind of the first thing you hear and the main ballad moments. It's probably one of the top three most iconic moments of this show is probably My Body is a Cage. Probably the, It's definitely the most memorable melody. Uh, but I think just that movement of the show and, and definitely be able to hear it twice in two different settings. The first time is just a percussion setting. The second time is more of a brass setting. I mean, it was, it was still full drum corps, but hearing in those two different depictions of it, that was definitely the unifying piece. I think if you ask someone, what did they play in 2018? The first thing they're going to say is, my body's a cage. Journey to the Center of the Earth by Peter Graham. And that yeah. transitions into... Um, yeah, Metropolis 1927. It is. There were some pretty innovative percussion techniques used in the intro, right? Like there, you were doing yes. things that had never been done before. Yeah, um, the marimbas play a lot of triple laterals. Like it's incredibly fast, even though My Body is a Cage is a typically, it's like a slow song generically, but all the rhythms that we're playing in the front ensemble are so many divisions of this slow song. And it actually, there's so many layers. Like you, if I showed you the music, you'd be completely taken aback by how many things are going on. And that's the, thing that's really cool about Paul and Sandy's writing is that all these different things are happening but they just add a certain texture to the whole overall sound instead of just being really obvious with what is happening if that makes sense so everyone in the pit has a different part which is really unusual for pits I feel like yeah like right at the beginning um where the the color guards one and the I think it was the color guard and the melophones were the one that ones pushing the props open at the very beginning and the point of it was supposed to be like it was like a struggle and like we're fr like the whole beginning is just supposed to be like we're frustrated because we can't talk to each other like we're trying to say something but it's either not being understood or not being heard um so everything that you see in the opener is really just like frustration confusion like a little bit of anger kind of thing before i heard like the brass really really play the ballad um in like spring training I remember um, I was with the the drums in Denton uh, for that first week at UNT, and I remember seeing like what Sandy had wrote for the front ensemble because I would spend the mornings with the uh, with the the front ensemble just um, looking over their parts, and it was it was already crazy. Sarah was talking about all those layers, and every single part was different, and I immediately like looking at that I was like wow this is this is gonna be awesome like the Renix riding is already like really cool but like this is just gonna be fantastic and then the next week once we finally brought everybody together for that second week of spring training and the first time we did full music ensemble and just hearing all that sound come across the field like like that, there's there's like no feeling, like there, there's no words to describe it. Like you have to be there. If any of you that are watching that are that were lucky enough to like be in the crowd um, when that ballad was played, like you know what that feeling is, but it's just, I, I would give anything to like go back and just experience oh, that man. Like minute. We have to give the two soloists credit right now, right this minute. Who are those guys? So there's there's actually a story that goes with oh, the them playing. There says three. What? So um, Leo Garcia was the original soloist, and when it was originally written, it was written as one baritone part. Okay. Uh, and Leo, before our April camp, which is kind of our biggest music, kind of put everything together for the first time camp live full drum corps color guards there for the first time leo got appendicitis and so the second soloist skylar mckinnon i i messaged him maybe three or four days before camp and i said hey i know you haven't been playing the solo 
could you learn it? And he's like, oh yeah, no problem. And uh, he's a professional musician now. He's, he's a pro. Awesome. Um, he learned it. He, he recorded all of our stuff that weekend. So everything we had from Maple Camp was Skylar. And so we get to free tour and Leo and Skylar like to just mess around all the time. Like they would play the bottle dance on two parts and make up harmonies and do this stuff and, <laughs> and just play old shows and all this cool stuff. And they started playing My Body is a Cage, but Leo would play it legit and Skylar would play a jazz version of it. And JD heard it. JD Shaw, the arranger, heard it. And he went, hold up, hold up. What was that? Do that again. And they did it. And he said, that's it now. We're going to do it. And Skylar literally wrote it down on a sheet of staff paper and gave it to JD and said, this is what I've been playing. And that became the duet. So ironically, the duet wasn't wow. originally written. It, it, it fits way better into the entire show. The dichotomy, the two sides, all of that. It works so much better uh, than the original solo, but it's it's interesting because that's that's always a popular moment for people, and it kind of happened by accident. It kind of happened with two people just. Well, messing I around tell you. Yet. All right, so we got Body as a Cage. Whoo! What was after that? Club Sound was after that. Oh my goodness! And we like the day before the first show, we like put it in on the field, like with drill, um, and. It was cool to do it like with the horn line, especially because it was like a time where we were literally all on the same uh, playing field. Like, do you remember who wrote the the choreography to that? It was Michael Rosales. He wrote the choreography um, from the beginning. Uh, so I'm pretty sure he taught it to like everybody at the April camp. Michael McGrew. McGrew. The story behind Michael um, coming up with that dance. It actually. Uh, credit actually has to go to Pacific Crest for dancing on the podium first. So Michael eventually just like came up with how to do that dance or part of that dance on the podium. There was a rehearsal where I just looked over to Michael and he just like something caught my eye. And then I saw him do the dance and I was like, wait, whoa, like the, the rep ended and then we made eye contact and Mark, you, you probably know like this feeling of like that drum major eye contact where like you guys just start reading minds. I'm like, yo, what did what did you do? Show me how to do th the dance. And he's like, okay. <laughs> then we like met in front of like the front ensemble and he like quickly showed me. I was never as good of it at it as he was. Um, we added our very last addition to the dance finals day, actually. We we just like we did like the shoot and then we looked at each other and we're like, we can just extend the dance like eight more counts, right? Like nobody, nobody watches us anyways. Like everybody's dancing. Like the, the drums don't need us. Like we can just do this. Right. And it was like, yeah, why not? So um, finals day, we put in that last edition, the shoot, the, where the arm is pumping and like the leg is kicking out as well at the same time. Um, and yeah, so Original credit goes out to PC, but Michael was definitely the mastermind behind all that. And it's, it's an iconic moment now. So the closer, real quick, Mark, tie this whole thing together. Well, it's, it's a Metropolis reprise. So Metropolis is used twice in the show. A uh, great deal of, at least where the brass is playing the show, comes from Pre Peter Graham material. He writes for British brass bands, so it translated really well. Uh, especially the stuff you hear in the opener, it's just real... It's a lot of technique, uh, like our uh, Thomas Hubel was doing some triple tonguing stuff on the trumpet that was just insane. If I didn't bring <laughs> up the mellophone uh, note. Uh, well, they're actually still playing it right now. <laughs> so if you, if you find any of those mellophones from 2018, they actually are still holding no, on. No, I'm going to fade it in as we talk <laughs> right now. It's going to just... Yeah. <laughs> and their their nickname uh, that was given to them and then they embraced was the Dreamline. Because it was, I think we had one new member in that mellophone line between 2017 and 2018. I think there was technically like one person went from alternate to having a spot and the other person was yeah. the new member. And so it was it was already an incredible group. J.D. Shaw loves mellophones. He was a mellophone. He's a professional French horn player. He always wanted to feature it. And the trumpet trio... I know you brought them up from My Body's a Cage. Yeah. That all started at February camp in Texas. Uh, JD was there. And the original My Body's a Cage was pretty bare bones version, just a melody. 
no more counterline, anything like that. And we have this great screen trumpet player, Michael Englar, who is now, I think, recorded the highest note in DCI history. And then last season went higher, just decided like he wanted to make sure he had the record full time. Um, and this trumpet trio, and it was JD in a gym with those guys just going, hey, who else, who can play this? Okay, you got the C, you got the E, you got the G. And all of them just taking turns doing it. Um, it just became this trio on top of it all, yeah. just that little extra spice at the end of it all uh, uh, to make it worthwhile. But yeah, it's um, incredible musicians. That was the, the theme of kind of 2018 is the talent was undeniable. And so you could play with the members a lot. Like when Chesley talks about Mike Rosales, like he would go out there and be like, we have a show tonight. Good. Add these 24 counts. Cool. You good? You good? Okay. We're good. We'll do that later. And that's how talented the membership was. It wasn't like we needed to rep it a hundred times or the first time percussion plays club sounds live is the day of the first show. That's no big deal because they're professionals and they could do it. And that's what made it as a staff member, a lot of fun. And I think as a member, a lot of fun too, because you could go, yes, we can do this. Who cares? We learned this today. Absolutely. Put this in tonight. Or we put on a second ending and someone goes, hope that ramp comes out. Otherwise, I'm going to fall down and bust my face. But they're fine. They're like, it's going to work fine. Why would it not work <laughs> fine? It's going to work every single time. Oh, man. let's. So. Are you guys ready to watch this show? I am so excited to watch this show. I'm really glad uh, Andy Toth and like Michael Rosales like let us like kind of create our own thing during mm -hmm. that. Carl, I think it's amazing. Jacket, you never knew, but from the inside of the props, the color guard would go like, yay, go Carl. Like when you would, like, because people would cheer, we'd be like, yay, Carl, like from the inside of the props. You know, I wish I knew that. Yeah, and we would sing uh, Lady Gaga's <laughs> yeah. like, uh, bad romance on the inside, like when the show started, like everybody did. <laughs> and they told us to nice, Carl. nice, Carl. Here we go, man. Dude. I like the Carl tough face right before it starts. We were told to have ego, so yes. we did as much ego as we could. And Kimmy and Chad. Oh, this is such a beautiful moment. And I this never, I don't think this ever had to change. I think they like got it on the first yeah, try. Yeah, they really did. This part's so cool. Mm -hmm. There's Sarah. <laughs> And the color guard, we were like, like laying inside of the props, like stacked during this part, and we just like jumped out to push the props out. Who's that? That's Ashley, and I'm right behind her. Oh, these little voiceovers that you hear, those are all buttons on the ETX that we're hitting. So aggressive. Love it. Oh my god, I remember when the color guard was practicing this pressure throw in the circle. It's terrifying. Um in finals, uh there was a girl that was on not on rifle, or it's the encore run. A girl that was not on rifle took someone's rifle and went out and did that seven. It was Claire King who took Hilia Stamper's rifle, went out and tossed a seven and handed it back to her for the rest of the show. And that's uh, me and HD up on top of the prop doing the flag stuff. Yeah, Mark. Ooh. And that's Hilly right there. Ugh. 
Not the this part like, was tough two to play with. And four oh, part yeah. harmony. So cool. Yeah. Having like the tenors come in behind the tubas and like having the tubas so offset to the ball ensemble, it, that was like a it time. It was tough. Like, oh the yeah. Whole entire season, but many Four rehearsals days. where it did not go well. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's all this Doppler effects by people sitting on the props, literally back, back to back. Like that. And the, the section for the flag line was really hard because we were spread out super far and we literally couldn't see a single other person. This drum feature sounded this good the whole season. Good old pirate music. <laughs> so many in the old phone days. Oh, I love it. And Hayden actually wasn't, he like spent most of his time with the color guard, but he was, I think, a trumpet player. Audition, yeah, he was a trumpet player. But he's the cheerleader at OSU, like a, and he he was in like Texas Royals or something. Um, he went he lived in Denton or. He's Keller. He's from Keller. Yeah, he went to Keller High School. So. He's they did fantastic. a backflip during the audition day, I believe. We're like, we could use that. Well, I don't know if y'all just caught that, but that little like phase in time this whole I love that like part. second movement 2a is all just in like crazy multimeter it changes from like three four to like five eight six eight and all sorts of stuff oh i caught i, I know that because oh. it was really hard to count <laughs> oh yeah i remember sitting up in the box with like mark and uh and matt like for almost an hour just figuring out the couch structure for that so it was so so cool when it all came together the baritone feature is so great, adding people to all the time. Oh, man. Oh, weapons. Nice. <laughs> this is Thomas Hubel. And he's playing what's written, ladies and gentlemen. And then there's Piccolo soloist. Yeah, this is from the original source material. And the baritone. And the Piccolo player and it is halfway sick. across the field playing in unison. These two rifle boys, they wrote all of this choreography themselves. Oh. They were just like, hey, do some tricks and like write this part. Wow. And so that, that whole part. Performer. You guys are all performers. Oh, this part right here was so hard because right after this toss, we all pulled our masks up and we had like eight counts before we started into the next choreography. So it was like a lot of times you would like pull your mask all the way up on your face or your mouth was still showing or I'd be like inside out. Very little The best thing musically just... too is it's, it's also through composed. There's never a moment where it stops. It just keeps going the entire time. Like maybe two, three counts, but it's all choreographed. Even if yeah. there's no music, there's something visually happening. That's so cool. Running up and down these ramps was so risky for the drums. Oh yeah, yeah. We definitely had a couple accidents before. This was a movement where the brass hated to do these guys. Hmm. Because they were moving everywhere. They were moving everywhere. <laughs> Uh, Everyone who wasn't gotta catch drum, some guard members. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tubas, let's go. I need you to catch some guard members. Well, and they had to wear shirts for like whenever they did that part because if not, the, the color like they would just slip right through their arms. All right, I'm gonna catch my breath and get ready here. This is. That's Tyler, he's the center marimba. So this is Leo with the original solo. Oh, and the color guard during this part, um, like we're split halfway on the field and we do choreography when our baritone player is playing their part and we hold, cool. the other side holds. I don't so know that like I noticed that detail. Oh, that is so cool. 
Oh, and this uh, saber soloist, his hand was actually broken for most of the season. Um, and he just like put on two gloves and <laughs> was amazing all the time. This is Skylar McKinnon doing the improvised version of the solo. I just have to say, Skylar and. They're both just. They're, they're both amazing. amazing. They're both amazing. Such a build up and tension beneath it. Snapper around the world. Here we go. And the color guard right here actually like screamed too, but <laughs> you can't tell. <laughs> oh man. Well, Michael, the first soloist is actually from Hawaii and the first even real march man he did was Vanguard. Like he maybe did a 20 set show when he was in Hawaii. So the half the opener was about the most drill he's ever learned. This is such a cool part. All the electronic sounds are being played by the pit in the front, which was also pretty difficult to line up with all the drums because of the latency. <laughs> oh, there's a mallet. <laughs> uh, it's all right, it's all right. Got extras. Uh, base five, I actually go to school with him, so I see him pretty often in Austin. This entire battery section is just disgusting. Oh my God. Here we go. Yeah. So cool. I feel like they added a lot to this dance later in the season, like all the flips and stuff. Um, it like pretty much stayed the same, but there were like parts that were like layered to like make it look more effective. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Love it. Gosh. And then we oh, all pointed at Peyton so you could see him do his backflip. Nice. <laughs> yes. nice. He timed it so well. <laughs> well, and Stone Lang, who is the horn sergeant, he does a scream. And oh, you yeah. can hear in some shows nothing in the last two weeks. I mean, he is screaming at the top of his lungs, but you cannot hear it on any recordings for the last two weeks. This is chaos. Here we go. Here we go. And here's the mellow drill of death. Yeah. Right in the middle of the field. Oh, yeah. This mellow, like all the notes. <laughs> oh, so awesome. It looks so yeah. good, though. I remember they weren't allowed to do that for like two weeks until they got it right. Because mm -hmm. that was just like so dangerous. I love that, that unison moment that comes out of that V. Da, da. It's amazing. It's awesome. This is my favorite part. If you look on the 50, there was just the right amount of color guard people for this one boy standing on the 50 right here. Um, he's 17. We, they didn't think that it like looked right for him to be on one part of the other, so he got his own so. Here we go. Hello, no, but no, no. I love that part. Oh. <laughs> we actually didn't have to clean that flag work that 
smudged. It's it like kind of just. It was always perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, under the direction of Sean Gallagher. Look at that crowd. Going wild. (laughs) You gotta stay hyped all the way to the very end. I think oh, that man. this ending was like super easy to stay hyped in because like I remember mm-hmm. in finals specifically, they were like standing by the end of club sound. Oh, yeah. Like they were, like all of movement four was still yeah. to go and I like people were already standing. I was like, guys, I wait, you're that. gonna be standing for a while. You might want to sit back. <laughs> <laughs> Not every year does the Vanguard get to enjoy such a, a season where you're at the top. At what point did you realize this show was something really special for me it was definitely like move-ins it felt special because like the color guard doesn't hear music at all until like everybody's together and like so the first time we hear it, like first time we heard it like there are people crying like we all got goosebumps and we're mm. like oh my gosh this music is already just amazing and we haven't even done anything yet right. um and then the, the idea of the show the props when we first saw like and then when we first started like we read a book called the energy bus before we moved in um so like the whole core read this book and it was about as carl brings it up um it's just about like like how to go into situations positively how to avoid like if you feel like you're being negative how to avoid letting that spread to others and it's just kind of like the whole book even though it's like a little bit like cheesy it like is really uplifting and so everybody reading it coming in we all came in with like this really positive mindset like just ready to work so I think that is like probably one of the biggest factors going into this I mean obviously the show design was amazing the music was amazing like we had very talented and like professional members that year but like going in with just like okay I'm like ready to do this let's do it like I like we're all here like drum corps is hard but like I'm gonna push past it um I feel like that was the biggest change like out of all of the years I've marched that was like the summer where we like put our heads down and worked from the beginning and I think like it was like oh okay my hard work's paying off I'm just gonna keep working hard while I'm at it so just a unique year of leadership in a really good way that we had a lot of people in leadership in second or third years in the leadership role like Carl had been a drum major in 17 and moved to center podium so like he had already been in that leadership role Stone Wang was coming back as a horn sergeant. A second-year horn sergeant just knows a lot more than a first-year horn sergeant. Um, and just anyone in leadership roles had been with the Corps three or four years. You didn't have a lot of these second-year section leaders. And then right. Sean Gallant did a great job of bringing the leaders together beforehand, having a mission together, having a game plan for when things go wrong, what do we do? Not wait until they go wrong, but have a mm-hmm. pre-plan. And so the leaders could take it. And it was, as a staff member is great like you didn't really have to bring everyone in and huddle you could go to a carl and say carl it doesn't seem so great today can you talk to everybody and he would do it carl what was your what was your favorite spot in the show to conduct the closer when once we hit the reprise of like metropolis it was easy on the arms and you could just like go all out but it was just like a good moment because starting from like dci san antonio that's when people started to get up and like they knew like the end was coming. So like, like you can literally hear people like start to rustle in their seats as soon as like club sounds like finishing. And then you hear people getting up and like, like you can hear them talking behind you like, Hey, get up, get up. Like something good's going to happen. They're like, what's going on. And then suddenly we like D shell, like big brass hit, like, um, and then the, the flags go up in the air and everybody's just like, whoa, that's crazy, but it's not even over yet. And then like the mail phones come in um, and then more people are like screaming. And it, it's one of those moments where like, again, like you just can't hear anything. It's coming together and yeah, people that were and pulled apart like, at the end are going to be, be exactly. reunited. And uh, I get chills just thinking yeah. about it, Carl. Oh, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us today. I want to thank all of our guests. Uh, Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you so much, Chesley. And thank you so much, Carl. And thank you so much, Mark. So ladies and gentlemen, if you are enjoying this content, please go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button for us. uh, And we will see you next time here on The Vanguard. Thank you.